It's time once again for a, an installment of Walking Through Acts. Uh, Acts being short for the Acts of the Apostles, the name uh, given to the fifth book of the New Testament. Um, chapter 6, verse 1 is where the reading and commentary will resume in just a moment, and I'll give you a moment to locate it if you're you are wishing to follow along yourself um, in your own Bible as I as I read and comment here in just a moment. Acts chapter 6 verse 1. Um, we're going to be introduced uh, in this reading here as we resume uh, to the first problem um, within the church. Um, I say the first problem uh, on a bigger scale. We've already seen Ananias and Sapphira in chapter 5 lying about the sale of some property and uh, so I guess that could be said to be the first problem uh, and persecution of course is right is starting on a small scale but it's starting uh, but this when I say a first problem I mean on a big broad scale uh, affecting the church and so uh, enough said I guess to set it up let's get underway chapter 6 verse 1 now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews uh, by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the uh, twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it's, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, uh, Prochorus, or Prochorus, um, Nicanor, Timon, or Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas. Don't know if I'm saying all of those uh, correctly. A proselyte, Nicholas is a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Okay, we'll stop there uh, at verse 6. Um, notice that, that, that it is indicated here that the numbers multiply. We've heard that, if, if, I say we, if, you're, if you are frequently a, a, a viewer of this uh, series, Walking Through Acts, we have frequently mentioned the, the uh, expression uh, added, multiplied, and so forth. Um, Luke, who's writing this many, many years later um, from when it was taking place, chose, and by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it's not just his own humble uh, opinion as a good way to word it, but with God's uh, uh, putting in him the uh, choice of words and so forth, uh, uses this word multiplied. And here it's mentioned again, the disciples are being multiplied over and over, That's that kind of expression is made. Anyway, back to what I said before we started, and that is we we now find a big on a bigger scale a problem in the church for the first time, and it's a complaint about bias, or 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 maybe it could be neglect innocently enough, but it could be prejudicially somewhat a neglect because it's a certain segment of the church against another segment of the church, um, and it had to do with with. A, what they call a daily distribution. Uh, there were folks, and we've already been introduced to this idea, uh, about the people who lacked among the thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands and thousands and thousands of members of the Lord's Church, this first church, this first gathering of people in the name of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. Many of them are, and we know this from chapter 2 when the church begins, that they're from all, they're from all over the world, uh, the Mediterranean world, and, and, and many of them, of course, probably, I'm guessing, did not come thinking they'd stay on to listen and learn from the apostles. There's no New Testament yet, and so they gave themselves uh, to the apostles' doctrine and teaching as the way for them to know what Jesus wanted of them, and uh, and so how are how are they able to make uh, not not forget about making a living and making ends meet? Just how do they survive? And I mean on a daily basis. And so uh, those people who had surplus and in some cases even lands and such like uh, sold 
brought the proceeds, gave to the apostles for daily distribution. Uh, daily, by it being daily, you can tell that this is not helping people live a luxurious lifestyle. Uh, this is daily needs uh, along the lines of, uh, we'd say, food and clothes. Uh, maybe shelter is implied. I, I say implied, included. Um, but anyway, uh, if it's on a daily basis, it sounds almost like basically daily bread, food. Okay, um, and anyway, Hebrews, those would be more of the Jewish uh, back, well, they're both Jews, these are all Jews, but those who are more local as opposed to those from more distant places, they're all Jews, though, and uh, either by birth or by proselyte, uh, being a proselyte to the Jewish faith. And so here's people that are, they're called Hellenists, uh, these are, that's another word for uh, Greeks, I believe, um, it's, it's, the, it's the idea that non-Jews is how I would probably say it, uh, against those who are Jews, why is our widows, and those would be some of the ones probably most lacking, uh, they don't have a man, in other words, to go out and try to get some food for them in, in some senses, maybe, especially if they're older, and uh, why are our, our widows, meaning the Greek or Grecian or Gentile uh, Christians, widows being neglected why why do they seem to not get any or overlooked or or it runs out before it gets to them however it was uh, somehow being uh, neglected well the 12 uh, obviously meaning the the apostles are who are complained to and they indicate for us to tend to this business of putting food on tables every day, uh, we are surely going to be unable, just there's only what we, what we call 24 hours in a day. There's only so much of that we can do, and we won't be able to, if we do that, do uh, things along the line of, uh, of uh, tending to the Word of God being taught and spread. And also, prayer is uh, mentioned as well. We'll give ourselves to prayer, and the preaching of the Word is the, uh, is the idea. And so, um, yeah, that's in verse 4. We'll give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the Word. I'll come back to that in just a minute if I can recall. And so, congregation, we'd say, church, brethren, people, you need to look out from among you seven men whom we can appoint over it. Uh, the apostles are the leaders of the church, but we are going to delegate, if you were, uh, a responsibility for them to tend to, uh, and that's their job, we'd say. Later on in the church, you'll see elders and deacons, and, and these men, in a sense, are prototypical deacons. They're doing what later will be referred to as the deacons in the congregation, tending to some of the more physical, earthly aspects of the Lord's work. But they're not just earthly men, or physical, meaning in a physical manner they're, they're, they're capable, because it says we need men that are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom and so forth. These are good men, men that are spiritual, men that are faithful and dependable, uh, that they are going to appoint to uh, take care of this. And seven men are found, and uh, the names are given. And uh, But as I said before, let me, before we get back to the reading, he, th they indicate we don't want to neglect prayer and the ministry of the Word to tend to this. Interesting that they should put prayer first. And, and, I, and I, I, want, I hope I'm not making too much of it. I want to make of this that prayer is just that, that important. It, it can't be, and so easily it can be done, I'm just saying it shouldn't be, uh, uh, a secondary matter, uh, an afterthought. Uh, if I get time before I go to sleep, I need to say my prayer. Uh, it was something primary, cent central, uh, 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 a primary focus, uh, mentioned first. And uh, not to say ministry of the word was secondary, but it's just interesting how prayer is right up there with the preaching of the gospel. Interesting. And so uh, this uh, settles it down, we might say. <laughs> so the first, what could have been a blow-up of a problem, divisive even, uh, gets dealt with in a very good way. Okay, back to verse 7. The Word of God spread, number of disciples multiplied. There we go again. I've mentioned how many times Luke says this. Let me start again. The Word of God... Then the word of God spread, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Wow. And Stephen, uh, he's one of those seven men that were mentioned, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there arose some from what is called the synagogue of the freedmen, um, Cyrenians, uh, Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia, 
disputing with Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we've heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council, looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. Wow. Let me pick up with that last thing before, before I forget it. Um, <laughs> Luke doesn't say what that looks like. He just says, he just says that they said, uh, or they saw rather, as they looked upon him uh, as the face of an angel. I don't know if they said that, but how Luke records what was their uh, uh, view of, of Stephen under arrest uh, was uh, containing or having, possessing the face of an angel. Definitely, uh, I think, uh, 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 a very striking pose, we'd say, or look or view of the countenance of his face, unlike the circumstance that he's in. Anyway, I just didn't want to forget that. Let's go back and pick this up before our time runs out, and, and that is this. Uh, Stephen, one of those seven, uh, who had hands laid on him by the apostles, by the way, I didn't mention that before, verse 6 says, they set before the apostles, these seven men, they prayed over them. When they had prayed, they laid hands on them. We'll find out later uh, in chapter 8 that the hands of the apostles being laid on people was a transferal mechanism of God to impart to others besides the apostles who, are, who already possessed it because they had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. They're doing wonders and signs and such. So when they laid hands, a gift went to certain ones, as God willed. Uh, it went to an individual, and here we see Stephen. Stephen, uh, full of faith and power, is doing wonders and signs among the people. That's in verse number uh, 8. Also, he is in debate. By the way, let me stop lest I forget too, and that is his job is to daily take care of putting food on tables or, or whatever needs of a daily uh, level of, of need need to be taken care of to widows and so forth. But it doesn't mean that he had no time for anything <laughs> else, I mean, because here he is. He's, uh, he's in a synagogue, uh, or they actually are from a synagogue. Uh, I don't know that this, I don't think the synagogue is in Jerusalem, but they are from a synagogue of the freedmen, and they're mostly foreigners. Cyrene is in Africa, Alexandria, Cilicia, and Asia. That would be up in modern-day Turkey. Um, anyway, they're disputing with him over various things, and they can't, they can't resist him. Their reasoning skill is just not up to it. Now, some of that may be Stephen is just a very eloquent, powerful debater, or also it could be the power of the Holy Spirit in him, both. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and lean that way a lot because it says they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. And um, so they begin to resort to underhandedness, resort to... to um, secretly trying to arrange people to lie about what they said he said or heard or what they heard and what he said and so forth. Get him in trouble, you know. And they got him in trouble, and the authorities come and get him off the street, we'd say, or get him out of there. He's got to stop this stuff. By the way, there's, a, there's probably, and this is a guess, there's probably, it's an educated guess, probably an element of truth in some of what they're saying, not the blasphemous part. But they said, I'm reading verse number 14 again, We've heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. I don't know for sure that he was saying that, but I know one thing, that's true. Jesus had indicated that he was going to return and, uh, and Jerusalem would be destroyed. You, you probably have heard some of the figure of speech about it, like not one stone left standing on another um, and uh, such like. And so that would be 30, 40 years later in the year 70. Historically, uh, it's it's... Uh, recordable. Uh, it's been recorded, I mean, uh, that it was in the year 70 AD. And, and that uh, the law or customs, rather, of Moses would be changed up? Oh, absolutely. Uh, he one time indicated uh, uh, that there would be new wine and new wine skins. It's not going to be uh, the law of Moses just 
slightly tweaked a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but it would be um, voided, we'd say, or it would be uh, become obsolete. It would it would be taken out of the way. But it still gets him in trouble. <laughs> Sometimes when you tell the truth, when it's spun in a negative way, you still get in trouble. All right, we'll stop there. We're not through with the story of Stephen. I'll just go ahead and tell you before we pick up with it next time. Uh, in chapter 7, the entire chapter basically is, uh, is dealing with uh, what transpires after what we just concluded with. And that is Stephen standing before the council. And uh, so we'll save, save that for then. Next time, join with me. Uh, join me again for a, a video walking through Acts, and uh, we'll look forward to reading about that. Thank you.